The last step is going to be to set up our mask for our UI in order to make it look nice. So what we're gonna do is in our mini map, we're gonna add a new UI image and we'll call this minimap mask. And this one is gonna be a regular image. The source is going to be a sprite from our folder, which is called, you guessed it, image mask, which is just a white circle. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna copy from the raw image, and let's label the raw image as well. This is gonna be minimap content. We're gonna copy the rect transforms settings. So in the rect transform, we're gonna go up to the gear icon, the uh, context sensitive gear menu, and choose copy component. And then on the minimap mask, we're going the object we just created, we're gonna choose paste component values. And so this is just gonna size it and position it so it matches exactly. Now, what we wanna do is to make this into a mask so that only the stuff inside the white area will be visible. So we are gonna choose add component, mask. I'm just typing in the name. You can also find it under UI mask. And we're gonna make the minimap content a child of the mask. Uh, and this is going to allow us to mask off the edges of the minimap content. And if we play our scene, we will see that we now have a lovely circular minimap. Very nice. Boom. Now, what we notice is if the player gets killed, the map stops updating, right? That is because our camera uh, has stopped feeding to the render texture, so it's just stuck on the last frame. Now, because this, these guys are going to hang out and try to kill each other now, um, because I didn't want to make the training longer and go into kind of what is detail that's only relevant to this game, basically what you can do is add a script to the player and use the on disable callback to then deactivate the minimap when the player is disabled, right? But I just figured you guys can figure that out for your own game. And in a lot of games, when the player dies, the game is just gonna end anyway. So I'm just gonna let leave that as extra credit for you guys to figure out. Um, but we have a working circular minimap and now we just need to add in uh, a little additional polish uh, we're going to add a additional image element, and this is going to be called minimap border. And we're going to add in, you guessed it, the image called minimap border. We already have copied our settings. We're just going to paste component values again. Doop. And we can see we've got a nice little brushed metal border there, and we're going to add a component to it, which is gonna be under UI Effects Shadow. And we're just going to set the X effect distance to six, and the Y to negative six, and the color is going to be a kind of a dark grayish purple with a bit of alpha, so not completely opaque. And that's just making it look a little bit 3D and nice. Uh, and we can also turn off the show mask graphic in the minimap, doesn't really matter, it'll disappear when the game starts, but if you wanna just not have that white circle there. And now we have a lovely 3D minimap. Now, one last detail that we're gonna wanna do, you may see some uh, warnings in your console about two audio listeners. We want to just make sure on the complete player tank, on the minimap camera, we remove the audio listener component, right? Because we don't need it and we don't need two audio listeners in the scene. So we're just gonna remove component and apply changes to the prefab. And then we can delete the complete player tank. Now, you can obviously tweak this and customize it to your heart's content to match your game. Um, but I think this is a pretty straightforward 
and customizable approach. Uh, it's also pretty performant. Um, and yeah, so hopefully this gives you some ideas for your own games. And thanks very much for watching.